In this third video to the ultimate guide to LumaFusion 3.0 on your iPhone, you're going to get a look at some of the more advanced edits and techniques on this app. Get ready for keyframes, multi-tracks, linking, and J and L cuts. Coming up now. Let's start out with adding keyframes. Now what we want to do first is choose a clip and let's go to our first clip here. And let's go ahead and click the pencil icon and then go to right about here, our frame and fit. And our keyframes are going to be located right here, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's scrub through our video from left to right. So we have a time lapse. Now this is a stationary image and we can make it even more interesting by adding some element of movement. In order to do that, let's go ahead and go to the beginning of the clip. Click right here. Let's add a keyframe. Now, as we scroll throughout here, any other change we make to this will automatically add a keyframe. So if we go all the way to the end by clicking right here, now let's add just a small zoom. We can go to our size and position, scroll up, and let's increase the size. Let's go just to, just a tad. Let's click on this pencil icon, and up here at the top, let's make it 100 and 110, and then click out. Now let's scrub again, and we can see that it slightly increases. Our keyframe at the beginning is the original size. And as we play throughout the rest of the clip, it'll go up by 10%. Let's click play and watch that happen now. Okay, let's go back to our timeline and click play. All right, looking pretty good. Now you can also use keyframes on music. Let's go to our music file right here. Let's find out where do we want that next keyframe to be. Let's go in about three seconds. Here we are about three seconds into our timeline. And then let's click the pencil icon again while still selecting the audio track. And we can see that our timeline has moved up just a bit right about here. Now we can move the gain. Let's move it up about, let's just go up to 10. So you can hear the difference. We can dial in an easier one zero point and there we go. All right. So we can see that there's a difference in the audio. It's gone up from the beginning to about three seconds in by 10 decibel points. And let's go ahead and give it a listen by clicking back, scrolling back and pushing play. Okay, keyframes can really come in handy throughout a project. There are multiple things you can do with them, and you'll see as we use keyframes a bit more throughout the rest of this series. So far, we've been putting our videos on one track. Anytime we introduce a video, it automatically snaps next to the previous one. So let's choose a video up here. For example, this one where people are waving the flag at the game. Now, if we wanted to take this video and put it in, what would happen is we click it, drag it down. It automatically snaps right at the end. But let's say we wanted to put it in the middle somewhere. Instead of cutting into tracks, you also have the option of putting them on top. So if you just drag upward, move over and somewhere on the timeline like so, it'll snap above and you can create multiple layers of videos as well as multiple layers of audio tracks. For example, adding music in sound effects, which we'll do soon. So let's put this track somewhere a little different. I'm going to delete it. Let's take a look at what we have in our timeline at the moment. Let's press play. And right about here, we have a lot of people cheering. Let's go ahead and put this clip somewhere in the center of this cheering crowd. So we'll go right about here, click on the clip that we want to insert and drag it right about here. And notice that it stays on top and then it'll go back to our original clip. Let's watch and listen to that as it plays.
Now it might look a little bit better if we take our two fingers and zoom in a little bit, get the crowd up and close to the viewer, go back and let's take another look. Okay. This multi-track option will come in handy later as we cover more advanced options in the future. There may be times when LumaFusion has linked your videos together. And if you delete one, then the other is automatically deleted as well. So let's say I click on this file right here. And if I click delete, everything is gone. So let's go back. Now we can tell if clips are linked together just by looking right about here in the center, we see a white bar. This indicates it's been linked. If you want to unlink files, all you need to do is click right here and you notice that that little white bar disappears. Now, if I click delete on this particular clip, it deletes pushing the next clip up to the beginning. Let's click back again. Now, I don't wanna do that, so I do want these to be linked. In order to link files, it's as simple as clicking the link button. And notice that we've got that little white bar again, indicating that these two clips are linked. This can really come in handy if you have several clips that you need to make sure that they work together, which will enable you to move a set of clips from one location to another location if need be. We also have the option of creating a blank clip. In order to create a blank clip, what you wanna do is either go to the very beginning or the very end of your timeline. You can do that by scrolling up here. This is the very end and this is the very beginning. And simply click on this plus button and you'll get several options. At the moment, let's just click the blank clip option and we've got a two second blank clip. Although it's two seconds, you do have the option of extending that amount or shortening that amount. It's really up to you, whatever works best. You can do the same at the very end of your video timeline. Blank clip, two seconds. Again, you can extend if you want. However, you can only place one of these at the beginning or end of your timeline. What you cannot do is take that blank clip move it over to somewhere in the middle of your timeline and place it. It won't work. What will happen though is it will simply disappear. Nonetheless, this is a very handy tool when we get into J cuts and L cuts and that's coming up next. J cuts and L cuts are fantastic editing techniques that add a level of professionalism and really smooth out your edit. Let me demonstrate. First, let's look at a J cut. A J cut is where you'll begin with the audio first of the clip coming up next. Notice right here we have a blank clip, audio underneath it, and then we come into our first scene. This sort of looks like a J. Let's listen to it for a second. Now, notice we have another J clip coming up. Here at the bottom, we have a cheering crowd. The audio comes in before we see the crowd. Audio in now and then crowd. This is another J cut. Notice how it's a smooth transition into the crowd. Now we also have L cuts. L cuts is sort of the opposite. What we do is we continue with the audio after the video clip ends. So we're going to continue with audio down here. The clip ends and we continue to hear the crowd cheering, but it looks like we're from a distance now looking at the stadium from afar. So I've lowered the decibel to make it more realistic. Let's take a listen. And from there, we have the music continue, scene goes dark, and then the music continues still and fades away. Let's listen to that. And stop. So let's look at our two J cuts, then our two L cuts 
in a full scene together. And that's the beauty of J cuts and L cuts. Practice these and use them in your next edit. The icing on the cake is still yet to come. Be sure to click on this video here for the fourth part to this series where things get a little more cinematic.